Hey everyone, I'm Wingman from Squadron Studio, and welcome back to part three, the final part of our custom table UI in Godot 4 tutorial series. Today we're going to be adding the final uh, touches, which is going to be the row and column highlighting here, and letting these buttons at the top actually do some data sorting. Where we left off at the end of last video, we had just added these column header buttons to the top of our columns, but they don't do anything yet. So the first thing we're going to want to do today is hook these buttons up to our sorting code, which if you'll remember all the way back to the first video inside dataframe.gd, we created this uh, sort by function that we use in our main script to uh, sort by the winning percentage. So we want to be able to sort by our arbitrary column. So now let's go over to our table class uh, down at the bottom, add a new function underneath render. We're going to call it something like on header clicks. This is going to be our uh, button handler function. And um, that's going to take a, uh, let me back up a little bit. Uh, so instead, so we're gonna, if we look at our table, we've got five buttons up here at the top, but instead of hooking up each one to a different function, we can hook them all up to the same function and pass a parameter. Um, column as a string to know which column we clicked on, all using the same logic so we don't have to repeat code over and over again. And then let's fill that with a simple print statement, column clicked, call. Um, so now we need to uh, hook up the uh, button pressed signals, and that's going to be up in the render function. We instantiate the table header cells, which you'll remember are buttons. Buttons, if you click over here on the node, have a pressed signal. So we're going to want to go in here and say uh, uh, cell, that's our button, dot pressed to access that signal. We want to connect that to our on uh, header clicked function. Uh, but make sure you don't call it with the parentheses. We want to just call the function itself as a variable. Uh, because if you call it with the function, then it's just going to then it's just going to use the return value of that function, which is nothing right now. We want to say we want to give it the function, and then we're going to need to give it the parameter that column parameter. So we're going to say dot binds, uh, and this works with any function. It's not just signal functions. Uh, neat little thing. Call because we're already using call here, and so that's how this function is going to know what column is being clicked. So let's go in and try that out. Run the scene. Column click team. One lost total percent. All right, so our code knows which button we are clicking. And now we just need to call our sorting code. If we look over here in data frame, sort, the sort by function takes the column name as a string and then an optional Boolean for whether or not we want the sort to be descending or ascending. Uh, so let's just start with the basic uh, uh, one direction sort. We'll say data dot sort by data being our data frame up here that contains the data of our table. We'll say sort by the column. And then this is important. We want to re-render our data frame or else it's not going to show the changes. Let's see how that works. Okay. Uh, you'll notice uh, it's not sorting data, it's just adding new columns, which means we need to add something to our render function. We need to uh, start by saying, when we render a new table, we need to delete all the existing uh, out data, outdated data. So we'll say for in and rows dot get children, uh, node dot q free. That's just a way uh, of deleting Godot nodes. So now let's try that again. And now that sorts that column alphabetically, sorts uh, that column by the numbers, by numbers, numbers, and once again. Yeah, so we're getting some sorting, but it only sorts one direction. We want to be able to go both directions back and forth. Um, and again, the way we did that here was with this descending parameter. So let's go up here and actually at the top of our data, of our table class, not data frame class, say, uh, just give it a current uh, 
descending, I would say sorted descending. That's going to be a bool is equal to false by default. We're going to pass that sorted descending as a parameter in here. And then every time we call it, we are going to uh, flip whether or not that's currently true. So you can say sorted descending is equal to not sorted descending. And that's just going to do a little Boolean logic. That's the exclamation point there. It's kind of hard to see in this font. Um, that's just going to say, if it's false, make it true. If it's true, make it false. So now should go back and forth. We've got alphabetically Denver to Texas. Now we've got Texas down to Denver. Uh, back and forth, and it works with the numeric columns as well. And now we've got our table uh, interactively sorting. So the last thing we want to add for a bit of visual polish and readability is our row and column highlights. So looking at our table scene, flipping back to the 2D view, um, one of the easiest ways to do that is just to add a couple of color rects. Um, so this will be our, say our row highlights. row highlights, and let's uh, make that spread across the entire width, but not have a height. Um, give it a, we'll need to give it a color as well, something partially transparent. We don't want it to be just blindly white covering everything up. So let's set the transparency down to 25. So it just kind of makes things a little bit brighter, wherever it's a highlight, it's not just showing up uh, by itself. And so that's Currently invisible, not doing anything. Uh, but if we were to, yeah, dry that down, you can see how it makes the highlighted the rows brighter. Set that back to zero size for now. Do the same thing for a column highlight. Um, except we're going to say go all the way up and down vertically, but with no width. So now let's go inside our code. And we're going to, when we render the table, set the sizes of those based on how many you know, rows and columns we have. So for the uh, column highlights, say, uh, we want to set the size dot x, set the horizontal width, because the, uh, uh, the height is always going to be the same. So it's going to be the full table, so we don't have to set that. It's going to be the size of the whole table divided by how many columns we have. So let's just test and see if that works. Yeah, okay, now, perfect. We've got a, uh, our first column highlighted. Let's do the same for the rows. It won't show up very well because it's just gonna be over the uh, um, header cells, which are already highlighted by themselves, but uh, we'll be able to see it in a minute. Size.y divided by Row counts plus one because we want, we want rows plus the header row. So uh, yeah, right now you can't see that one very well, but we have our column highlight is in that first column and our row highlight is in that one. Now we just need to make them need to make them follow the mouse every frame. The first part of that is going to be getting the position of the mouse every frame. So um, up here on top of our render, we're going to make a funk process to uh, run every frame we're going to save our input uh, say mouse pause is equal to get local mouse position it's just a nice built-in function here handles that all for us um, but we want to check if it's inside the uh, uh, table rectangle that we're working with so we'll say if rex2 vector2.0 and size uh, dot has point mouse pause then we want to do our stuff and basically that's it so the, the rectangle class has this function has point which just checks if this point is in the rectangle and uh, here we're just saying if uh, the relative position of the mouse is in this rectangle of starting at zero and extending the size of the table and just to test that out, we can say uh, row highlight dot position dot y is equal to mount that mouse position dot position dot y. 
and for the column, set its x position is equal to mouse pause dot x, no, dot position dot x. Let's run that. And that's mad. Oh, hold on, that's a vector. We don't need to say dot position. And now our rectangles are following our mouse, but we want them to snap to uh, a nice grid uh, to show the rows and columns and not just randomly following our mouse around. So to do that, we're going to need to uh, snap to the cell size, um, which means we're using some of this logic down here. But instead of retyping it, let's just make a um, another class variable, say cell size. It's going to be a vector to i, um, and just give that a value of zero by default, so it has something to uh, start with. Um, and here, we're going to say uh, that's going to be our call size, and it's going to be our row size. Forgot to declare properly. Don't need these empty lines. And then cell size is going to be vector to i consisting of row size and call size. And now we go back and set our row highlights dots size dot y is equal to call size or no it's equal to row size I think or, sorry no it's call size because uh, we know the row size so it's uh, it gets a bit confusing dot size dot x is equal to row size let's check and make sure we did that right yeah okay that's those are the right size um, we line them up yeah so now we go up and we can use that cell size to uh, do our snapping up here in this uh, every frame instead of just saying position is equal to those positions say uh, our mouse snapped is equal to mouse pause dot snapped cell size and now we say uh, row highlights dot position dot y is equal to mouse snaps dot y and vice versa for this one. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, we've got some uh, nice snapping, but it doesn't quite line up with where the mouse is. Let's let's take a close look. So it looks great there. And as we go down. It's, it's jumping a little bit early, earlier than we want to. We want it to be in this row here, 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 and then not snap until here, but it's snapping when we get to the halfway point. And that's because this snap function rounds to the closest multiple of cell size rather than to the lowest. So we're just going to need to uh, have a little bit of an offset in here just to account for that. So we'll say subtract half of the cell size. So let's see what that looks like. And that's perfect. Uh, we are tracking the mouse with our row and column highlights, and we are snapping to the rows and columns just like we want. And there you have it, folks. Um, our table series is complete. Uh, if there's any additional questions or features you'd like me to try to make a SQL video on, let me know. But if not, I'm gonna be moving on to some other topics. I uh, hope you all enjoyed and learned a lot from this. Have a great day.